we need to understand a lot more about pike movement. I mean, anglers know a lot about pike movement, but the, the authorities, etc., need to understand it as well, and we need to prove it scientifically. And I think the, the tagging programme that's now been started by EA, for instance, um, in Norfolk, is aimed at trying to understand pike numbers, the sustainability, and ultimately is going to help us actually manage these systems a bit so when primnesium strikes we can immediately react to it and hopefully do some logical restocking with fish that have been grown on from that system. Um, there's quite a body of evidence which would indicate that there might be problems with the pike populations and we don't know if that's true or not so in order to find out the first thing we have to do is try and understand uh, what the population is because if you don't understand the population you can't put in place any management strategies to sort it out. The purpose from my perspective really of why we're tagging fishes is because we have to have a, um, if we wish to do something for the population of the uh, pike in Broadland itself we have to start off with small steps and then we progress to bigger steps and then eventually we walk and then we run and how we do that is we start off with a pilot study so initially we're tagging fish in two broads and Ormsby here behind me is one of these broads and uh, we're keeping a close watch on the pike and all the recaptured pike we get and we're trying to work out what the retention rates of the tags are. If the retention rates are good then we can proceed at the end of the pilot study with rolling the project out much wider. But this particular tagging technology which comes over from the States. Um, as far as we know it's never been used in, in, in northern pike, species of pike that we get in this area, it's never been done before so there is actually a lot of interest not just amongst pike anglers uh, in this country about this project but around the world in terms of using these tags to understand pike so it is pretty unique. From a scientific point of view as well um, it's the number of pike that we've tagged has been really important because um, you, you read about projects where they, they put tags on maybe half a dozen fish, or, you know, maybe a few radio tags and they track individual fish over a few days, whereas the numbers we've tagged here, you know, we've, we've probably tagged the best part of 200 pike now, which is just staggering. Um, when, you, when you think that you've maybe got, what, 600, maybe 1,000 pike in the whole of the broad, so we've got a significant number of them tagged. I mean, it's really shown the value of getting people involved and, yeah. you know, this this project could really yield some really important results, I think. Absolutely. Yep, let's go. Okay. Yep, this is one. So now we're just taking the weight of the fish to start with. This will enable us to look back at the records. If this fish then gets caught again, we'll know how, how it's grown in the intervening period. 312. scale the fish so the idea here is to take some scale samples so we can determine how well it's been growing and you can from, from that you can deduce how well it's been feeding as well because the two are obviously interlinked. The scales, um, the scales have uh, rings on just like a tree um, if you look at those rings you can actually tell how old the fish is and as Andy says with that information you can look at the scale you can actually determine how long the fish was at each stage of its life. So you can actually work back and tell if it's been growing quickly when it was younger or if it was growing slowly. If you have a large enough population size, you can really tell then, you may find that... Uh, Six, zero, two. You may find that certain years were very good years and young fish grew very well, or you may find certain years were very bad and the growth has been very poor. What we look at, to tell the sex of the fish is, is the vent here. It's the shape of the vent determines the sex of the fish. Yeah. It's very important with pike, if we can, to know if it's a male or female because males and females grow at different rates and you have to understand that in order to look at the, uh, look at the data and look at the, to determine the growth rates. So this is the, Steve's now inserting the uh, tag, it's called an alpha tag. This is inserted in the soft tissue between the fin rays. Um, we worked for a while in a lab just working out the best places best locations for these tags and certainly uh, in pike this seems to be one of the better locations so in salmonids it's done on the fatty tissue behind the eye but with um, pike they don't have that fatty tissue 
um, so that's not possible. Um, in muscle lunge they've done it in the back but the reports of retention rates are not particularly good so and this seems to work quite well. And then this is just an acrylic die that we put into the base of the dorsal, the root of the dorsal fin in order to, as a, just to verify this is indeed a tagged fish. Just, which is, you can just about make out there, there's like a gold mark at the base of the fin. And we choose this colour really because we're trying to find a colour that isn't really occurred naturally in nature. So if I'd used red for instance, you, you get a lot of abrasions and, and um, uh, um, uh, parasitic infections on fish from time to time and they're often a very reddy inflamed colour so that could be e easily mistaken for something natural so we try and go for something that's as vivid as possible so that by the time it's gone under the dark pigmented skin it still stands out and someone can see that it's actually a tagged fish. So. As a side project there's also uh, a group at John Innes Institute that is working on a chemical uh, test kit to analyze the toxins and that project is closely linked with this ongoing project and will probably be very closely linked to future projects starting within this framework. Um, as far as I know this is one of the first uh, projects where uh, both biologists, environmentalists and chemists are working closely together to solve this uh, question. Critically, we wanted to find a tagging technology that we could train anglers to use themselves. And that's, I think, the key to this project moving forward. We're doing the initial stage of it. We're understanding if these tags are going to work, aren't we, over yeah. the course of a season. We can train them up and they can get out there themselves and really help us to help them understand pike in the broads. We just couldn't do it across the broads we don't have the resources to do it but it, this project if it, if it works moving forward really will help us get that information about pike stock so we've got that baseline we understand what the state of the pike stocks the pike fishery is like now if we do that then we're better armed to try and understand what if anything we need to do moving forward to help manage it help preserve it for the future now that we've got so many fish out there tagged you know just coming along today, just with the, the hundred or so we had beforehand, I was so excited about how many fish we're going to catch and what's going to happen to them and it's going to be really interesting over the next few years to see how many of those fish we catch and, and how fast they've grown. I mean it's, it's brilliant that we've had fish already that we caught over three months ago yeah. that we can identify as having been tagged and we know where, where they were caught roughly, we know um, date they were caught, how heavy they were, what length they were, we've got scales from them so we can tell their growth patterns. Um, and in terms of success I didn't really have preconceived ideas because there's, there's some scientific evidence to suggest on certain species uh, specifically found uh, in the states that the retention rates can be um, quite poor and you can have rejection up to sort of 85-90% uh, at the moment, we appear to have 100% retention rates and the project admittedly has only been going about three months but that's quite encouraging to start with.